guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the DC TV show. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we're doing another Q&A video. I am preparing some videos for this week, so please be sure to go over to the community tab right now. Leave your questions, ideas, topics, or theories, because I am preparing these videos for the week ahead, because I'm going to have a pretty busy week. So, this is why I'm doing this, so please be sure to go over there, leave as many as you want, you don't need to just leave one, if you have like three, four, five ideas, let me know, and comment it on the community tab. So, I really appreciate that you guys have been doing that, I've been getting some great questions, making some great videos out of them, because, you know, some interesting stuff to explore, like we're going to explore in this video. So, the first question comes from YouTube on the community tab. And this is from Trey Foley who asks, do you think Jesse Quick is going to be on Stargirl since she's from Earth 2? So this is a really good question because we have no idea what happened to the original Earth 2. Apparently it was destroyed. Well, we do know what happened. It was destroyed. Now I think of it. But we don't know what happened to some of our characters. That's what I meant. Okay, so we don't know what happened to Jesse Quick. Was she on Earth 2? Was Harrison Wells? We kind of presume from what they've teased and what they have, you know, in the back half of last season that Harry was there and that Harry actually died. But we never found out about Jesse Quick. There's been no references to that. I know at one point she was on Earth 3 training with Jay Garrick. So, you know, maybe Jay is with Jesse somewhere. Maybe Jesse's fine. So the question is in regards to her coming to Stargirl because she's from Earth 2 and Stargirl is on the post-crisis Earth 2. So in the Arrowverse right now, no one knows that the multiverse still exists. They think it's only Earth Prime. They think they've just merged the Earths into Earth Prime and there's nothing else out there. But in fact, Crisis created all these other Earths and had these other Earths, you know, replaced essentially. That's why, say, Stargirl is situated on Earth 2 now where, you know, in the past that was where Zoom was from. That was where Killer Frost was from. That was where, you know, the other version of Barry, Iris, and, you know, Jesse Quick and Harry Wells were from, but that's not their Earth anymore. So, in answer to your question, no, she's not going to be on Stargirl because she was on Earth 2. If they want to include her in Stargirl, they can totally do that. But the fact that Stargirl was on Earth 2 doesn't mean it correlates to the previous Earth 2 because it's completely changed. So, yeah, let's move on to the next question. This comes from Captain Widow on YouTube who asks, When do you think the Reverse Flash will die for good? Well, it's not going to be anytime soon because they originally planned for the cliffhanger of this last season, so season 6, to be a reverse flash cliffhanger to set something up for next season. So we can presume from that season 7 we're going to get something to do with the reverse flash. So he's not going to die for good for a very, very long time and I don't think he will because that is his sort of thing. He always comes back. There is no way he can die. He always comes back somehow. And I guess the only way to do that would be to destroy his speed force, to destroy the negative speed force that he made for himself, because that would make him not be able to time travel to, you know, find all these ways to kind of breach, you know, death, essentially, to avoid death by using the speed force. So I guess that would be the only way to make him actually permanently die and go away for good. But yeah, he's not going away anytime soon. I believe there is plans for him to come back next season. So yeah, don't worry about that if you love Reverse Flash like I do. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. This comes from Mulan who asks, It's confirmed that all the CW shows will be in the DC Fandom event. What do you think they will tell us? DC Fandom takes place in August 22nd. Do you think the shows will start production by then? Okay, so there's two questions in one. And so in reply to the first question, yeah, all our DC TV shows are confirmed to show up at DC Fandom, which is essentially replacing Comic-Con this year for, you know, the DC Universe and for all their properties, including films, TV, and comic books. Obviously, the TV side is what we're focusing on, the CW shows and, you know, the DC Universe shows, HBO Max as well, probably as well. Okay, so what do you think they will tell us? They will have panels for, say, Supergirl, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, you know, Superman and Lois, Batwoman, and many other shows, including, like, Stargirl and stuff. So, they're going to have panels. The actors will presumably be there. Some of the actors have confirmed they're going to be there. 
I'm guessing it's just going to be a replacement over what they normally would do at Comic Con. So I'm expecting big announcements, say from Supergirl, probably especially because Supergirl is going to be waiting a long time and I think they want to reveal something about their next season rather than waiting. And I think that sort of goes the same for the other DC TV shows because they do like using Comic Con as a way to get people hyped, to get fans hyped by releasing those trailers, by having those panels and people, you know, get that information, it spreads like wildfire online, and people get really excited, and that makes, you know, the anticipation for the next few months, say past July, when Comic-Con normally is, they normally air the DC TV shows in October, it gets those months by not so bad anymore, because, you know, you have the information, you have that stuff to think about, to get excited about, so the main thing is to get fans excited, so I'm guessing, they're going to reveal, you know, the villain, maybe the story, and some of the sort of themes that are going to go behind this season, if they have any new casting announcements, any big reveals to do with, like, a crossover or something. I would expect all of that at DC Fandom, and, you know, I think you guys can get really excited for that, because, you know, August 22nd is when it's happening, and in reply to the second question you said, it's happening August 22nd, DC Fandom. Do you think the shows will start production by then? No, it's been confirmed by some people on Superman and Lois and Batwoman that they are starting in the fall, so sometime around September to October time is when the CW shows are returning to film and when they intend to return to film. Whereas, you know, they could probably do it by, you know, the end of summer, say August time. So they could film before August 22nd. But to be safe, the CW is holding off their filming until the fall, so autumn time, September, October. So there won't be any trailers or anything, so because productions aren't starting, you shouldn't expect any, like, big amounts of footage. It's mainly going to be announcements, you know, in the panels, and that's all it's really going to be. Apart from Supergirl and The Flash, I've talked about this. They've already got footage from their final episodes of the season, and they can definitely cut together a trailer or, like, a sizzle reel, like a teaser trailer so I wouldn't put it past them if they want to do that that's probably the only chance of a trailer but apart from that no productions aren't going to start before August 22nd let's move on okay so we've got this question from uppermost player on YouTube who asks do you think Jaime Rias Blue Beetle could be introduced to the Flash if the elongated man has to go so I like this and I wanted to talk about this because you know I'm a big Blue Beetle fan I've always been a big Blue Beetle fan especially in Young Justice if you guys have watched Young Justice you know he's amazing he's one of the best characters out there Jaime Reyes is definitely up there with my favorite DC characters Blue Beetle is always really interesting I especially like this version that uppermost player references Jaime Reyes as Blue Beetle, he's the best, and I think he would be a really good match for The Flash and for the show, however the problem is, The Flash has so many characters, and yeah, Elongated Man is gonna go, Ralph is gonna go because Hartley got fired, but I don't think they're looking right now to replace characters and to have like a bunch more people join the show because of the restrictions when they go back to filming and production. I don't think they're going to bring in that many more people. They might even cut the cast down and have, say, more people in one episode. And then the next episode, you know, the other people appear. Obviously, Barry's got to stick around. Iris has got to stick around for, like, the whole time. But, you know, they might figure out some way to do that. But, uh, yeah, I would love to see Jaime Rios, Blue Beetle on The Flash. I think it would be a perfect fit for the show. What do you guys think about that? Would you be excited by the possibility of Blue Beetle coming? Let me know in the comments down below. But anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. There will be some more videos out in the next few days regarding some of the questions you guys have sent in. So please be sure to send in more questions on the new community tab post that was just posted right now. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.